Hello everyone, welcome to Sorcerer's Classes. This is Tushar Shaw and in this video we will be continuing to solve the UPSC uh, CS Main 2020 paper that we were solving since the last uh, 14 videos I guess. Okay, so I guess more 3 or 4 videos more would be more required and then we will be completing this set. Okay, so let me just uh, add in some details uh, regarding this uh, uh, paper that is it is an uh, subjective type paper and therefore we have to write the answers instead of just taking them as uh, as we have already as we have done in like quite a lot of uh, multiple choice questions. So that is not the case here you have to like write down write down the, uh, like, uh, the answers properly for getting full marks each and every step here must be perfect. Okay, so obviously we don't have any negative marking in this case. If you write a wrong answer, you'll be getting just zero and nothing, and uh, no other changes will be observed. Okay, so yeah, so uh, this was uh, I've already explained a lot about uh, the the uh, pattern for this paper. So you can just go check out the uh, previous previous 14 videos that I have been solved in the in the lab in the earlier time. Okay, so let us uh, without wasting any time, let us um, uh, dig into this paper and see what we can solve uh, in this video. Okay, so in the last video we did up till question number 7b. Okay, 7b was done. Uh, the 7b was divided into two parts. Uh, the first part was done and the second part was left. Okay, so the, the second part is kind of a big question. So we had left it, left it in the last video. So we will be completing it in this video. Okay. So the question says that what is the order of the reactivity of following interhalogens? Okay, so the interhalogens that are given are ClF3, IF3, uh, ClF, ClF, BrF3, and IF. Okay, so the first, so the first thing that you need to consider that there are two factors that are that you need to consider before checking the stability and the reactivity of the. Uh, uh, system of the interhalogen species okay so the factors affecting stability or stability or you may say reactivity like both are inversely proportional to each other stability reactivity uh, i would like to write a note here that note uh, stability uh, more more the co compound being stable more the stable compound stable compound lesser is the reactivity is the reactivity okay so yeah so this is the so uh, like they are inversely proportional to each other inversely proportional okay so let me just write down the factors first of them is the uh, positive the more the positive a charge on the cation i'm sorry more the positive charge on the on the main species main atom or species the more stable is the compound okay I am sorry, the more instable is the compound, is the compound and secondly, uh, the more charge difference between the bond, more charge difference, charge difference or electronegativity difference between the bond or EN difference between the bond, between between bonds uh, greater is the reactivity is the reactivity okay so firstly we have to check which of the which of the bonds has highest reactivity in accordance with the second rule okay so the most charge difference is between if7 and if because I is the most electropositive and uh, uh, F is the most electronegative. So, these two would be having the highest charge difference and therefore, uh, uh, these two would be the more, uh, more, more reactive than the rest of the species. Now, among these two, which one would be the highest, more reactive? So, IF7, IF7 is more unstable. 
because uh, the like it is more unstable because more positive charge is formed over here because a seven f minus are there so uh, the, all the all them all of them would be taking up the f minus uh, f uh, the negative charge in the system therefore making i more electropositive okay so this would be reacting first so i f seven would be the highest reactive and then i f and uh, then the uh, then there would be brf five okay. BRF5 because after I BR has the highest electropositive and therefore the difference between the BR and F is uh, like a very high after after uh, the C uh, the IF I IF and IF7 okay and the next compound that is given is CLF3 and uh, CLF so uh, we, uh, the in this case both of them are CL so the charge difference between the species are same but the uh, in this case this compound has more delta plus on the cl atom and therefore and this one has less than delta plus in the cl atom and therefore this one is more reactive okay then the uh, clf atom okay so clf3 is more reactive than uh, clf so this one is the range for uh, reactivity okay now so if we write the range for stability of the, the system so the range will be like uh, uh, like it is it will be decreased so if7 if br5 uh, clf3 and clf so this would be the range of stability of the compounds compounds okay So this is all about uh, the, the order, uh, order and reactivity, order of reactivity of the, the interhalogens. Now, why this uh, this kind of order is given? Because obviously, if we compare the interhalogens with the exact halogen, halogenic species that is uh, Cl2, Br2, I2, and F2. If we uh, like, if we exclude F2 over here, then uh, then uh, ClF is obviously more more reactive than Cl2. Why? Because of the second factor that is the charge difference here is formed Cl F bond F is more electronegative so this would take the minus charge and uh, Cl being electronegative but still being bonded to a more further electronegative compound acquires a positive charge making this compound more unstable and therefore this one would be like easy to uh, uh, easy to break the bond. In the, in the case of Cl2 what would happen is both of them are equally electronegative negative so the electron pair like the electron cloud will be uh, properly and equally distributed between the two cl atoms making the bond uh, making the bond breaking quite difficult because as they are equally distributed the bond breaking would like they, it would form a solid rod okay we have already le le learned learned this uh, these concepts in uh, like in our elementary stages when the electron cloud being more distorted the like uh, yeah so the electron cloud is being more distorted the bond breaking is quite easy and the electron cloud is being ev if e evenly distributed then the bond breaking is difficult okay so this was all about the uh, structure okay uh, structure and the reactivity of the species okay uh, so uh, let us move on to the next question that is question 7c okay so question 7c has uh, uh, four part uh, part wise question so i don't think we'll be able to complete the total total part wise question all of them in this video because they are quite long long questions so we'll be doing it, uh, there are four parts so we'll be doing two parts in this video and then we'll be uh, like uh, explaining the other two part and the further questions in the next video okay so you may just catch up that so uh, so the first uh, so the first part of this 7c says that uh, why are manganese iron and cobalt manganese iron and cobalt uh, in uh, uh, are used in the redox enzymes in preference to the in preference to zinc gallium and cal calcium okay so so the process that is involved uh, like they are being involved is redox uh, redox uh, reactions in biochemistry okay redox reactions in biochemistry so obviously you all know that when we study uh, redox titrations normal redox titrations okay normal redox titrations we normally use these three compounds only okay and uh, zinc and calcium are normally studied in complexometry why because they are not uh, so much reactive in 
in cases uh, in, in reactions like redox but they form quite a stable complex and quite uh, good data is pro provided when they uh, form complexes with different kinds of organic species especially when treated with edta like uh, like we have done in our practical classes okay so uh, why redox yeah, why, why redox uh, reactions in biochemistry involve more of uh, mn fp and cobalt this is because of the fact that uh, basically the main factor that is e not value e not reduction potential of all these three mn fp and co are at the have the most optimum value have the most optimum value optimum value so that it can undergo redox reactions quite easily be it any kind of uh, environment it is being reacted in okay so that is why uh, this was the like main the layman term in which we have to uh, like explain the uh, answer this was the this is the main reason and the other other corresponding reasons are uh, like uh, the, the iron uh, these iron sites uh, do not uh, form quite stable complexes and they can undergo easy attachment with the like uh, uh, iron uh, uh, ligand complex can be easily formed and then easily disso dissociated also okay fe plus l 6 l Okay, so this kind of this kind of attachment and detachment are is, is easily possible for Fe and cobalt. And now the, for this case is uh, the for cases are like calcium and zinc and gallium. This this type of attachment is possible obviously, but they form extremely stable complexes with uh, the, like uh, the ligands or organic ligands when we are some uh, uh, including biochemistry because they have uh, in biochemistry we already know that uh, we have huge structures of uh, compounds in between and one uh, like in in between huge structures one or two metal ions do the work to do, do the total work so uh, in that case uh, if the if the compound is uh, like uh, totally bounded with the uh, uh, to, with the metal ion that is in case of calcium or zinc so that in that case the reaction won't be like very uh, like very facile okay so in that that case we have to uh, use uh, these uh, mns fe and co okay so this was the overall explanation you may just uh, uh, reverse this video like uh, go go back in this video uh, listen listen this, listen what i have said step by step and write those these uh, each and every point down in a copy because this would be extremely required for that uh, for the uh, correct answer okay so let us move on to the next question 7 c 2 Okay, so 7C2 says that uh, uh, explain the emergence of uh, Ca, Zn, Cu plus in the control of protein folding rather than uh, uh, Al3 plus and Cr3 plus. Okay, so Ca2 plus, Zn2 plus and Cu2 plus are um, uh, more used in protein folding, are more used in, used in protein folding, protein folding then uh, al3 plus and cr3 plus why so this is also because of the reason that i have explained earlier that is uh, complexometry okay now what happens is uh, let me scroll this down so what happens is uh, for uh, denaturation for naturation of protein that is protein protein folding okay so we require uh, metal ions that bind the protein or protein part protein uh, like the amino acids in such a way that uh, that all of them will like uh, if uh, form a cluster with the uh, metal ions okay now if uh, al3 al3 plus is a very weak uh, uh, metal ion that uh, like uh, it forms extremely extremely weak complexes okay al3 plus and cr3 plus also they form uh, weak complexes be it uh, weak coordination complexes be it any type of organic or inorganic ligand okay but in case of uh, the ca2 plus zn2 plus i have already told you in the uh, in the last question that these form quite strong uh, the complexes when in in presence of organic ligands especially uh, we have done uh, we have done in the experiment with edta okay so you can give this reference in your in your answer okay so quite strong complexes are formed now, uh, because uh, uh, when protein uh, naturation is taking place, so like uh, protein is getting in the, from the unfolded form to the folded form, what we require is uh, these molecules, these atoms bind the proteins, uh, protein atoms in the in the specific part uh, of the of the amino acids in such a way that clusters are formed. Okay, clusters of protein are formed around the clusters of protein is formed around the uh, metal ions. Okay metal ions 
so obviously the, these clusters would be uh, like this cluster of protein would be considered as the uh, natured protein okay natured or we may say in layman terms we, we may say it as folded okay so this was the, this was the only reason why uh, like uh, these these three like uh, calcium zn and cu are used basically uh, for protein protein folding and uh, not al3 plus or cr3 plus okay so this was all about this video i guess we did uh, b b quite big big questions uh, basically explanation type questions there is no solving in solving uh, type questions as such in this case so uh, all i am doing is providing you with uh, uh, like uh, uh, exactly proper uh, explanations so uh, what you have to do is write down the explanations properly in your copy take notes of that and basically um, uh, keep it keep it up to that okay so thank you guys for this video i'll see you guys in the next one okay